OK, good afternoon, members. Welcome to this digital meeting of the Governance and Audit Committee being held via Microsoft Teams today, which is Tuesday, the 20th of April 21. Just to confirm, this meeting will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website. That's except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, any the images and audios of those present and or speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council's website. The address is www.cafili.gov.uk. If you lose connection uh, during the meeting, we do have committee services staff with us and I'm sure they'll be able to help you reconnect. OK, if you can leave your cameras on, but put yourselves on mute until you want to speak. If at any chance during the meeting we have some issues, perhaps you can just turn your cameras off then. OK, thank you ever so much. Uh, Becca, may I ask if you could take a roll call, please? Yes, of course, Chair. Councillor Mike Adams. Present. Councillor Elizabeth Albrook. Present. We've had apologies from Councillor John Bevan. <laughs> Councillor Carl Cass. Present. Councillor June Gale. June's on mute. Present. She is present, Chair. Councillor uh, Dave Hardy, can we've had apologies? Councillor Colin Mann. I'm over back. Councillor Brenda Miles. Present. Present. Councillor Theresa Parry. Present. Uh, Councillor Margaret Sargent, Chair. Yes, I'm here. Councillor Graeme Simmons. Yes. Councillor Julian Simmons. Present. Uh, uh, Mr. Nigel Yates, our lay member and vice chair. You're on and we have a cabinet member, Councillor Elinard Stenner. Present. Welcome, Elinard. Thank you, Chair. That's that's all the councillors in attendance. Um, did you want to ask the officers and Wales Older Office to introduce themselves? I think that would be nice. So I'll go first then, Chair, if that's OK. Good afternoon, members. Richard Edmonds, um, known as, as you know, as Ed. I'm the Corporate Director of Education and Corporate Services here at Caffili. Hi, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Should I go next? Yeah, you Sue go Richards. next. I'm Head of Education, Planning Strategy and covering transformation on an interim basis, which includes business improvement. Thank you, Chair. Um, shall I go next? Please. Thanks. Uh, I'm Deborah Grano, Acting Internal Audit Manager. Um, I'd just also like to introduce to you, we've got two members of staff here from Internal Audit who are going to be observing the meeting. Um, I don't know if you just want to introduce yourselves. I've got Alex and Rebecca. Do you want me to go first, Al? Go on. Hi. Hello, Rebecca. Hi, I'm nice Rebecca to see you. from Internal Audit. Thank you. Hi, I think I saw Alex earlier on. Yeah. Thank you. Really, thanks. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Jones. Uh, this is my second meeting. I introduced myself at the last meeting. I'm, I'm the audit manager for Audit Wales. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah. Shall I go next? I'm Andrew Southgoom. I'm the finance manager for corporate services. I'm sitting in for Stephen Harris today. Thank you, Andrew. Hello. Sorry, should I go next? Please. My name's Ros Roberts. I'm the business improvement manager. And uh, although nothing on the agenda today. Thank you very much, Ros. That's lovely. Thank you all ever so much. If we could go to the agenda proper now then. Um, the apologies if you know of anyone else in that's 
uh, you've had apologies for. Could you put them in the chat, please? And agenda item two is declarations of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial interests in respect of any item of business on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Nigel, can I ask you, has anyone declared an interest, please? No, no one's declared an interest, Chair. Lisa? Lisa Lane? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not sure if the gentleman from the Wales Audit Office is on the, the meeting today, uh, but just out of caution, really, I'd like to declare a personal interest as a relative of Mr Anthony Veal. He may not be present, but just to make uh, members aware, it's a personal interest only. OK, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. OK, we're on to agenda item three uh, before we go on to any more of the agenda if you don't mind um, I'd like to discuss the length of the agenda it's um, it is very long again 12 items and we did agree in January that we would try to do something about reducing the number of items so with your approval I'd like to put agenda items nine and agenda items 10 to the June meeting. Um, can you let me know if everyone is in agreement, please? Brenda Miles. Yeah, I'm generally in agreement. Um, just um, I, I did bring this up in our pre-meeting earlier, but just to reiterate for the main meeting, I had one concern about agenda item 10, which is that there is work um, arising from that report. And I was concerned to be assured that um, pushing it back to the next agenda doesn't delay. Uh, sorry, Brenda, you taking forward the um we've lost him. Uh, uh, Deb, can you come in, please? Deb Granu. Yeah, sorry. Um I did did break up a little bit, so I hope I got the, the gist of the question. So obviously if I'm um incorrect, please correct me. Um yeah, I just like to give assurances to the members of the committee that um, the work that's been uh, done is going to carry on um, in you know, any way um, and we'll be able to report more fully on that at, at the meeting um, in June. Thank you, Deb. Uh, Thank you. Brenda, is that OK with you? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I just, I know I broke up a little bit there, so I switched my camera off just in case that that was causing a problem. If that's okay, yes, I'll leave my camera switched off. Um, the other thing I was going to say, just in passing, is if we are, are shortening agendas like this, and I do agree this was a long agenda, um, it would be handy to know in advance because you know, obviously, I and I'm sure other members of the committee have already prepared for those items, and now we won't be discussing them. So. Yes, apologies for that, Brenda. I see you. Nigel, who's next, please? Nigel. It's on silent. I was talking to myself then, sorry. It's Mark Jones or Colin Mann. OK, Mark, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, just one observation on... Um, item nine, which can be picked up in, in June, if members uh, agree to move it to that month. I, I noticed that um, it only covers internal audit recommendations, and it's it's important uh, for, for the uh, tracker to cover external, i.e. Audit Wales recommendations as well, 
So, for example, last year when you were approving your 1920 accounts in the audit report, there were 22 recommendations and they really need to be put into that tracker. It shouldn't simply be internal audit. So when you consider this paper in June, it should cover external and internal audit. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, take that on board, please, Deb. Um, yes, OK. Um, I will need to see how we can find a mechanism to do that, but um, I'll certainly take that on board. OK, thank you. If any queries, please speak to Mark. Yeah. Colin. Uh, thanks, Chair. Yeah, support your uh, proposal and um, um, I would also support the um, comments of Mark Jones. Obviously, we need to be tracking uh, both sets of recommendations. Really. OK, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, agenda items. I'll second that. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Um, agenda item three and four is the both sets of minutes, one for January and one for March. Would you be happy to take them as one vote or would you like them separate? Lisa's hand is up, Chair. Oh, Italy. Lisa. Sorry, Chair, just to, just for the record, really, just if members could just show, uh, give a show of hands that they're all happy for uh, the deferment of those two items, just for the minutes, really. No need for a formal, okay. vote, just a show of hands. You, you've yeah. moved and seconded it. Hmm. OK. Yes, everybody has said yes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for a reminder, Lisa. Back to the minutes. Would you prefer to take them page by page uh, for and vote on each one, or would you prefer to do it as one meeting? As one vote, sorry. Happy to move the correct record, Chair. OK, thank you. Page one, page two, page three, page, oh, they, page 11 actually, page 12, that's the special audit of the, of March, I've gone back to front, I'm sorry, and the other one is page one, two, endless. One to page six. You're going to move that as a correct record, Colin, are you? Yes. Okay, Second move to the votes, please. Oh, hang on, I need to move her in a seconder again. Oh, dear, dear. I second it. I'll, I'll move it again then, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I didn't get a seconder, Colin. Yes, right, to the votes, please. I have I have two hands up, Elizabeth and Graham. Before anyone votes, what's your question, Elizabeth? Liz? I'm sorry, Chair. I didn't realise that we would have a, a voting slip, but it's come up now. Ah, oh, OK. Thank you. Um. And my vote and slip hasn't come up yet. Would you like me to accept your vote verbally? Yes, please. I, I, I agree. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. That's all gone through. We'll now go on to Audit Committee Forward Work Programme. Now, oh heck. Oh, in another life, I'm going to be ever so techy. Sorry about this. Um, 
the Forward Work Programme. I would like to have your approval because we're moving agenda item nine and ten to the June meeting. I would like to have your approval to move the corporate risk register update and the regulator recommendations update, which Ross Roberts um, was going to give a, as the presenting officer. I have spoken to Ros and she said that she would be happy to have the committee meeting in July because it would be more relevant to audit members. So um, can I have your comments, please? Any yeses, any noes? I agree with that. Uh, Chair, Councillor Mike Adams. Thank you, Mike. I'll agree as well, Chair. Thank you very much. I agree yes. also. Oh, that's lovely. Are there any comments on this forward work programme? No. But can we uh, amend these? um the forward work program and can we go to a vote please has the form come up for everyone yeah thank you can i register my vote as well on that please Yes, of course, Nigel. Thank you. I have the same problem again, um, uh, Chair. Um, no voting form, so yes, I agree. Thank you, Teresa. Right, that's OK. Uh, that's passed. <clears throat> The next agenda item is agenda item six, which is an update from the Wales Audit Office. This is only to note, but obviously there's going to be many questions. Gareth, can I ask you to take this, please? Um, well, I'm going to ask um, Mark if he could come in. I can't hear you, Gareth. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now, Chair? Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you hear me now, Chair? Yes. Yes, I can. OK, I'm just going to ask Mark um, to take the first uh, page because that's the financial um, aspect of the update, if that's OK. Yes, that's fine. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'll be very brief on this. This is page 17 of the pack. The, the, there's two entries on in that table. The first one is to do your grants audits, and there is a paper at the back of the agenda, which is to note, and that gives you the information on the result of those grant audits, which is a, which is a positive outcome. As, as, as for those of you who have read that, that's a really positive outcome. Uh, and, and then the 2020-21 annual accounts, which we are currently undertaking, and we will come on to that in the next paper. So I'll pass back to Gareth. Thanks. Thank you very much. Chair, are you, I'm, I'm happy to present a very brief update on this. Um, colleagues, um, members will see that on page 18 of the um, update, we state in the corporate governance review, which is looking at the governance arrangements around the support for the transformation agenda is in progress. We are going to pre um, present that report to the next audit committee. Um, and just very, very briefly through the rest of the work. We did meet with the corporate management team and cabinet last week collectively with the care inspector at Wales and Estin to present our assurances and risks. And we are now um, looking to develop some potential um, proposals for local risk based work that may come through in our audit programme um, for 21-22 in the next two months. So hopefully at the next audit committee, we may have some updates on what those what those may be. Um, we continue our work on recovery planning our financial sustainability work, which we reported to you last year. We've rerun another um, 
year of that and we will be presenting that uh, local report to you at the next audit committee um, subject to clearance of that report with the council and the COVID learning project we continue with our work on that to uh, bring that through we have given you the links to our recent national reports including our one on trust tack and trust test track and protect as well as the procurement supply of PPE during the pandemic and providing free school meals during lockdown which you'll know that the Kipperley approach has been mentioned in that and there are some further ones um, that we'll be bringing through around emergency services regeneration town centres and the picture of public services but um, noting that time is going to be pressed on the agenda today I, I'll conclude my comments there but happy to take any questions that members may have Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, questions, please. Colin Mann. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, on uh, page 19, um, mentions financial sustainability and uh, the report, I think, uh, is an all Wales report rather than just, just for here and mentions the fact that nearly 500 million uh, was received by council from the Welsh government. Um, I don't know. I don't know how often auditors look ahead, but um, uh, how do you see things panning out in the next year or two with the effects? Obviously, there are savings from the way we're working at the moment, but there are, as we all know, there are a lot of extra costs. Um, do you see things getting sort of um, healthier or less healthier as, as time goes on? Um, thank you, Councillor Mann. I think Mark may well come in on, on this one, but we will be producing a local report which will come to the next audit committee around your local position. But Mark may be better placed to answer your wider question if that's okay, Councillor Mann. Okay, thanks. Uh, I mean, I mean a, a key point in terms of your wider question, if we're talking about the financial position, is the Welsh Government has, has um, in the last few weeks extended its financial support to Welsh councils uh, for six months into the 21-22 financial year, so to the end of September 21. So that's what happens beyond that date is an unknown. That's obviously going to be a matter for the for the Welsh government, and I and, and I guess to what extent it gets funding from the national government, the UK government as well. So I'd say the council financially has got a, a, a reasonable amount of certainty up until the end of September. Little really kind of unknown and unknown after that point in time in terms of the uh, the additional funding you've been receiving. Um, I mean, more ge more generally, of course, th 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 there are lots of challenges ahead. Um, uh, if, if we looked at yesterday's news headlines, it was around the health service across the UK and the uh, the backlog in in non non COVID uh, uh, illnesses and so forth, and the huge backlog there. And there'll be similar challenges in local government as as, as well. And no no doubt, some of those will hit the headlines. But but. You, there's probably not much more I can say as, as, as the auditor, but in terms of your financial position, you've got that Welsh government support until until the end of September as a minimum. Yeah, September is not long in planning terms, obviously, is it? But, uh, but, uh, yeah, so. and uh, abs abs absolutely. And um, you know, if the, the Welsh government, I guess, is going to be uh, determined to some extent by the funding it receives from the national UK government and and and, and so forth. So there's there's those considerations as well, I, I would imagine. OK, thanks for that. Um, I, I've got a question on a different thing, Chair. I don't know if anybody else wants to come in on this one. No, you carry on, Colin. OK, uh, the other the other link that uh, I was able to have a look at was the one on commercialisation. Um, and again, I don't know whether you see it as part of your um, your remit to actually look at the skills which are available to local government when they embark on the commercialization strategy. I mean, there have been uh, some well publicized issues in with some small district councils in England who uh, I'm sure you know uh, invested hundreds of millions of times in various uh, wonderful things like shopping centers. Which, um, which again are very much open to question, and uh, how much, how much you look at these things, how much you sort of keep an eye on and advise when, when uh, an authority is is embarking on this. Uh, I, that's where I was interested to know, really. Um, I think, Councilman, as you'll be aware, the 
Team Kafili Transformation Programme does include a strand of work which includes commercialisation and there's, um, there will be all members updates around the commercialisation which has been through the governance process around the council's intentions and also the objectives that the council has set itself for its commercialisation activities which obviously have to be decided by the council itself. Um, what I am able to confirm is that the council was part of the field work for that commercialisation report at the outset. And when we met with officers, not myself personally or Mark, but the, the team from Audit Wales around a year or so ago, that was at the outset of the council's journey. And we have provided um, updates to the council, um, the report um, to the council and the officers responsible for that area of activity for them to consider the findings in there. And the report does set out a series of checklists and things that the council may wish to consider as it manages the risks related to commercialisation and as well as the benefits that it may be realised through that uh, area of activity. But again, it is that balance of risk and managing the benefits that need to be uh, looked at by the council through its governance processes. Um, so yes, it's a watching brief, um, but something that the council has to determine for itself whilst we may take an audit view on that at the, at the point that the evidence is there. OK, thanks. There are various examples of success and um, and examples in the opposite direction as well, aren't there? So, uh... Ed, can I ask you to come in, please? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Just um, a little bit of additional information, <laughs> uh, hopefully will be of, of use to members. You know, I think I entirely agree with Councillor Mann uh, when it comes to commercial skills and acumen um, and the, the kind of more traditional local government approach. Sometimes there's a little bit of a divide. But as, as is always the case uh, in an organisation such as Kefili, you know, we're aware of our strengths and our areas requiring development. And in the commercial space, uh, we are in the process currently of procuring some commercial training uh, to assist those individuals um, to begin thinking and operating in a kind of more commercial space. So it's just a, a, a little marker really to suggest that there's some training going on um, over the next weeks and months, which will hopefully help us uh, shorten any gaps that may exist. Thanks, Chair. OK, thanks, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Are there any other questions, please? No? OK, thank you very much. Thank you, Gareth, and thank you, Mark. On to the agenda item seven, which is the 2021 audit plan, uh, which will be audit wales again. Uh, Gareth, with the help of Andrew. I think, I think Mark will lead on this one. Oh, very good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'll pick up on this one, Chair, and I'll, I'll pass to Gareth uh, to uh, pick up on the performance audit content. I'll take the paper as read, so I'll just touch on a few points in the uh, in the paper and uh, take any questions at the end or, 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 or along the way. The first few pages are really setting out the uh, the purpose and basis of our audit, so the statutory backgrounds, uh, why, why, why the audits are needed and so forth. So m most members, if not all members, are probably fairly familiar with, with, with why we're doing the work. Um, I'll go to Exhibit 1 and just comment briefly on a, a few a few parts of that. Exhibit 1 is quite important. It's where we set out at this stage of the audit where we see some of the key risks to the 2021 financial statements. So where we see risks of material misstatement um, and where we focus some of our work. So some uh, in, in there we have a few references to last year's findings. Um, as I touched on earlier with the recommendations paper, there are a lot, a lot of recommendations and a lot of uh, reported issues in last year's audit report on the accounts, 22 in total, as I said earlier. And some of those reports, some of those recommendations rather, and some of those um, issues that were being raised are really, really important to this year's accounts. So we've got a couple of references in this year's plan. We didn't, we didn't want to be too exhaustive in terms of writing, but you know, lots and lots of information. But we just wanted to flag it generally to say, well, there are some really, there's some real risks here uh, in terms of what was reported last year that we are taking into account in terms of this year's audit. Um, the good news is we've been in regular contact with 
the key officers in, in on 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 most of these uh, ordered recommendations and the the uh, the evidence of progress that we are seeing is good you know so that's that's an encouraging sign and something that i was keen to say the other thing touched on briefly in exhibit one is some covid issues so if you read uh, some of the entries around the pandemic you'll see some content on valuations so land and buildings and property uh pensions there are some there are some risks around that relating to COVID, and we may have uh, some audit references in our reporting as as with last year. Uh, there's lots of financial support, of course, going through uh, the council uh, from the Welsh government. Some of that is direct expenditure that there is council expenditure that should go through your accounts and will go through those accounts. A huge amount of it is on an agency basis, so you're 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 spending the money on behalf of the Welsh government. You're passing the money on. And that that will go through the accounts in a very different way. It's not really carefully expenditure. You are an agent paying on behalf of the Welsh Government. And we also mentioned quality generally, because if you lose key staff, say to illness through through COVID, for example, that can have a real impact on the quality or the timeliness of what you deliver to us. So we mentioned some of those issues. The uh, just picking up on another one uh, randomly, the city deal, the Cardiff region city deal, that's in exhibit one as well. There's potential for that to be material this year. In previous years, it hasn't been material because not that many projects really have got off the ground. But if more projects have got off the ground during 2020, uh, 2021, then it could be a material area where there could be uh, some consolidation that comes into those to those 2021 accounts of, of, of Carfilly. So I've just touched on a few areas there in terms of Exhibit 1. There's, a, there's other content as well, but I, I won't go through everything. Exhibit two, that's some of the other matters that we're picking up on. So if you if you scroll down through the report, through the plan, you'll see exhibit two. Uh, I'll pick out one of those randomly. And, 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 and the last entry in exhibit two is around the, uh, the, the Local Government and Elections Act and the, uh, the corporate uh, joint committees that can be set up from 21-22. So they're not relevant to the 2021 year of account. They're not, they're not, they're not kind of, they don't kick in, in in 2021. But we do say in this paper that if the council is going down the route of corporate joint committees with other local authorities, it's, some, it's an area where we'd welcome early engagement to give you, uh, where we can be helpful in an audit sense, have that early engagement with you. If, if that's where the council uh, is, is heading. Um, I'll just mention a couple of more areas before I pass back to Gareth. Exhibit four covers grants and um, there's a grants report at the back of the agenda for information only, but the this is setting out the grants that we're going to be doing later this year, later this calendar year, and it remains as six grants. So just like last year, there are six grants uh, that we audit. In total, they're well over 100 million in value, so quite big numbers, and we have to certify those um, each year. Four of five of them are on behalf of the Welsh Government, and one of them, Housing Benefit, is on behalf of the Department for Work and Pensions, DWP as it's often called. And finally, I'll come to the fee. Exhibit five is the fee setting out um, last year in terms of our estimate and our actual. I think you know from previous meetings, um, you, uh, I think it was the, the, the meeting before the, uh, the, the the last meeting where you had discussions on the outturn for the year. There was additional cost incurred in that year, but this is that's set out in this, this exhibit. And also it's given you a fee estimate as well. So the fee estimate for this year is 373,000. That's lower, you'll note from the exhibit, than the fee estimate for last year, which was 399. So that's a that's a that's a decrease in cash terms, and, and in real terms, it's a it's a larger decrease again because of the impact of inflation and so forth. I'll pass back to Gareth because I know Gareth wants to mention a few things on performance uh, audit work, uh, and then we can take any questions. Again, um, as with Mark, I'll I'll take that the paper has been has been read and you've seen the full detail of it but just really just to give you an outline of the performance audit program when we've come to you previously we've um last year we came to you and said we were going to try and be more flexible in how we're um responding to our audits and the work that we're doing so as you as we track through and produce you the update reports through the year you'll see how the program that we set out will turn into the deliverables and then when we deliver those final reports so in terms of well-being of future generations act we are going to be discussing with the council the work that's going to be ongoing in that area over the next year and we will be applying um some of our work to that we will be um looking at your um duty to discharge um the publication of an assessment of performance later on this year and we will be um auditing that 
Um, the main bulk of our work will be made up of assurance and risk assessment, which will look at five key areas, financial position, um, self-assessment arrangements under the Local Government and the Elections Act, recovery planning, which I think we all recognise is one of those very, very key elements for all of you, um, all councils across Wales and all public bodies. But very much that will be linked in with the work around your transformation programme and the strategic recovery framework, implications of Local Government and Elections Act, and also carbon reduction plans. You may have noticed that recently Cabinet have received a, a report on the impact of carbon reduction on the Council's fleet. Um, a piece of work that we will deliver in all councils, as we have done with financial sustainability in the last couple of years, is a piece of work called Springing Forward, looking at um, the building blocks for a sustainable future, looking at how effectively councils are strengthening their ability to transform, adapt and maintain the delivery of services um, in a, as we move through the pandemic. And finally, we may, as we said, we met with the uh, Cabinet and senior management team last week to present assurances and risks. And we will be looking to develop some options for local risk based project um, and we will update the audit committee as we finalise those. So that's the finalisation of my presentation. So as Mark said, we're happy to take any questions that you may have on the content of the report of the, the plan at this stage. Thank you very much both. Uh, Nigel, can I ask you who's first please? Uh, Brenda? <coughs> Brenda Miles? Yes, Councillor Miles. Oh, um, I think I'm OK now. I was going to ask a question about the uh, corporate joint committee that was mentioned on page 34. But um, actually, in our pre-meeting, Councillor Mann reminded me that we are aware of that. And I did have a look at it and I hadn't made the connection between the um, with the preparation of the strategic development plan and the regional transport plan and those being the functions of the um, corporate joint committee. So my, I'm happy. I know what the corporate joint committee is all about and I'm comfortable That's with that. Fine. So. Thank you, Brenda. Thanks. I've got Nigel. a note of Colin, but I think Colin was in the first part of the, uh, the plan. Is that correct? Colin? That's, that's another one, Nigel. That's another one, is it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I I spoke on the last report, didn't I? Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. No, I'm on uh, page. What was it? Page thirty-six, I think. Um, yeah, page thirty-six. The um, the housing benefit subsidy and the recurring error in the calculation of earned income. Um, obviously, the worrying bit is the words recurring error, because obviously we're dealing with. Um, people who are relying on uh, housing benefit. And um, uh, I don't know the detail, obviously, but this could have quite a serious effect on some people, depending on uh, uh, the exact detail of what, uh, what has been going on. So I don't know whether you can give us any more uh, information on that and uh, what effect it's actually had on the on the system and on the people who are involved with it. In claiming, I meant that. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's it's a, it's a grand Thornton audit uh, that they did uh, in, in the, you know, they're, they're closing six months. Um, but if you go to the paper at the back, uh, the, 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 the grants report is in the agenda at the back to note. And if you look at the housing benefit, uh, the adjustment to the statement was £434. So it was quite, so it was quite oh. a small adjustment. Okay. So the, re the word recurring might be um, accurate, but possibly is on a small scale, if you know what I mean, because the adjustment, they're big, big claims uh, for any council. They're huge claims to housing benefit. Yeah. And for the adjustment to be for just £434, that is that is really, really small. So I don't think there's a big problem here. But what, one thing that we will do uh, as part of this year's audit is is, is pick up on these points and, and, and obviously do follow up work. But, it, but the impact was very small. Yeah. Uh, so, thanks, Chair. Had I had I caught up with the 434 figure, I probably wouldn't have raised it. But uh, as you say, out of 52, well, 52 million plus, that is a very small figure. But um, yeah, um, it 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 sounds far less serious than it might have been. So th thanks for that. Thank you, Colin. Nigel. Yeah, I've I've a, a subtle question uh, on the fees. I wonder if. Uh, you could tell me how would you cope with a drop in your income from three hundred sixty-seven thousand to two hundred fifty thousand in a year? How do your department cope with that? 
Yeah, the, 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 fee, the fee estimate this this time last year, the fee estimate was two hundred two hundred and fifty thousand pounds for the financial audit uh, of the accounts. It, it is an estimate, um, and it's an estimate that we provide under the Public Audit Wales Act two thousand and thirteen. Uh, and, and things and, and 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 public bodies can get a rebate if if things end up costing less, or they can pay more if an audit ends up costing more. And, and what happened, um, as, as I think members are aware, for, for the 1920 set of accounts, is that the audit, for for a number of reasons, um, you know, co cost a lot more. That, you know, that's that's quite an unusual increase. That's quite a sizable increase there, but it but it cost more, and, and therefore those costs under the Act were um, were, were, were billed to to the council. So. We, 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 if, if you're asking how did we cope financially, and under the Act, we coped financially by charging charging higher than the fee estimate. The, this year's fee estimate, which isn't part of your question, but I'll mention it anyway. This year's fee estimate is we've estimated that if, if we get good quality accounts on time with good engagement from officers, you know, responsive uh, responsiveness from officers, we estimate that the audit for, for 2021 will cost £235,000. So it's it's a lower fee estimate than, than last year. So not really relevant to the question you asked, but I mentioned that as, as, as well. I, no, I, I, was, I, was, I was curious about how you, how you take on the expansive work that is increased and then decreased. How, how does your department cope with that? Yeah, well, well, this this audit last year would have been done by Grant Thornton because that audit for that year was contracted out. Grant Thornton had been your auditors um, for a number of years, and and before them you had uh, you had PwC, uh, and I actually did the audit before PwC. So I, I think I left the I think I left the Caffili audit in around about 2009 2010. Um, so it was Grant Thornton. It was Grant Thornton. When 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 I say the audit took longer. That 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 was Grant Thornton uh, doing that audit, and therefore within their within within their kind of resources, it was taking longer for them. So that would that would be a question that Barry Morris uh, would have ha would have answered in that respect. All right. So if it, it, it wasn't your department, then it will be this year. It will be this yeah, year. This year, um, yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. But, but, but not. I'm glad to, see, glad to see you're you're a more efficient department because you're much cheaper. <laughs> Time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, is there anyone else, please? Um, no, I haven't any on that on this on this particular no. subject. No. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now, this is to note, so there is no vote, so we can move on to the next agenda item, which is agenda item seven, which is twenty twenty one. 2021 audit plan, Caffili County Borough, and it's with Debbie. Debbie Grano and Nigel and, sorry, and Andrew. Deb? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Um, yes, you can see that there's um, reports and um, associated appendix. So um, if I can just assume that the members will have read the report and uh, the appendix, I can just um, just point out some um, key issues, if that's okay. So um, obviously um, the plan has been undertaken with some uncertainty on um, the amount of um, access we're going to be able to have to establishments through the rest of the year based on the impact of COVID. So as a result, we have had to change our approach to certain work areas. And um, the other key issue as well is um, some staffing issues where we had some staff leave, um, retire, reach natural retirement age and a retire in um, the last year or so. So we have been carrying in, um, some vacancies very recently, but uh, I'm pleased to announce to you that um, I've a following conversation with Steve Harris last week, we're now going to be restarting um, a recruitment process to backfill some of these vacancies. Uh, so um, the plan days have been based on gradual filling of those vacancies and getting back up to a full complement of staff. Obviously that might take some time, so that's been built in as a um, progressively through through the rest of the year. 
Um, in terms of prioritising our work, we will be prioritising our work on um, the high risk areas, main financial systems and other risk areas um, such as um, the continuing review of safeguarding, uh, the work we're doing on the fraud strategy and um, some work on IT. We're also rolling out controlled risk self-assessments for work with the schools and other establishments where we can provide a minimum level of audit coverage in those areas because we are not able to undertake face-to-face -face audits at least for the time being. We've planned not to do any face-to-face -face audits till at least September and at that point then we, we will have some better idea about how um, things are going to be going with regarding access in the other council offices and um, obviously yeah, external establishments as well. Um, so let's just have a quick, so is there anything else um, that I do need to bring to your attention? Um, as we've mentioned as well, I know the report's been deferred, but we have actually implemented the recommendation tracker for our um, audits, internal audits, that we are uh, now undertaking all our audits using the MK Insights system, which allows an integrated reporting tool and recommendation tracker. So that is actually now in use and obviously will be continued to be used going forward. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically the key point. So I'm happy now to accept um, any questions. Um, can I ask a question, please, Deb? Of course. Um, the the recruitments, um, how how much down are you in the audit team? Um, OK, we are. Um, Previously, we were um, nine. We've currently got um, Alex, who's the um, apprentice, who's on a four year temporary contract, it's additional um, complement to the staffing. And um, we have got five vacancies. We have also have a member of staff who has been seconded to the track and trace service as well. So, um, that isn't an actual bank vacancy caused by a member of staff leaving or retiring. That's just a temporary issue caused by the uh, redeployment to the track and trace. That's at the moment, that's until June. But I think that situation is a little bit fluid as well regarding. OK, obviously the, that yeah. seems a, a, a big drop in your staffing numbers. Um, is it at all possible I know there's talk of restructuring everywhere, but is it at all possible that perhaps at our June meeting you can give us an update on what's happening? Um, well, we should have more information on the recruitment, I would hope, uh, by by June. We should be well on the way of, of, towards that or actually have recruited. Um, so mm. I certainly can give you an update there. Um, with regards to the rest of um, the vacancies and potentially structure, I understand that Steve is planning a restructure within corporate finance, which may or may not um, impact on the, the section. Um, mm. Fortunately, Steve isn't here. Um, I don't know whether um, Ed can add anything to that at all. Ed, could you come yeah, in? I can, I can do. I can do, members. I'm just conscious we're heading into operational staffing matters in a public okay. forum, so I think it would be helpful if um, Deb, Steve, and I can continue to work up the restructure around finance and and internal audit, and then when we've got something a bit more concrete, we can share that with you as members um, in due course. If that's okay. Yes, that's Thank fine. You. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Deb. Nigel. Have, yeah. Oh, sorry, Deb. Yeah. Just, just a quick one. Um, we we would uh, possibly get something a bit more up to date, maybe in a July meeting, which we hope to arrange. Yeah. Yes, and yeah, also, July would be better. Yeah, and also um, with regard to the plan as well, we we can um, now give more detailed information um, regarding audits undertaken and recommendations 
you know, we'll have more flexibility, you know, within the system and more improved reporting. So that's something it's we can that can certainly be uh, discussed at, at the committee and maybe you know the committee consider what level of information you know they may need going forward. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you very much, Nigel. Thank you, Debbie. Any other questions, please, for Deb? Uh, no. Okay, if we could have a mover in a second then, please. Can I move? Thank you, Nigel. Second. Thank you, Liz. Right, if we could go to the vote, please. Thank you. Should have the forms up on your screen now. I have a same issue. Um, sorry, Margaret, I have no forms coming up on my my PC. So um, yes, I agree. OK, thank you very much. Can you can you make a note of Nigel Yates vote for this as well, please? I agree. Yes, thank you, Nigel. Uh, can someone tell me, please, if everyone has voted? Yes, sure, that's carried. Thank you very much, Beck. We'll move on now to, um, we leave. Just a moment. We'll leave agenda item 10 and we'll move on to the public interest. Uh, Mr. Tranter, are you? Oh, Rebecca. Thank you, Chair. Can I just check, Chair, if you'd like to um, take the information items first before you take the public interest test so you haven't got to stop the recording and then restart? Thank you. Oh, yes, of course. OK. Um, as far as I'm aware, the information items haven't been brought forward. Is that correct, Beck? Yes, that's correct, Chair. OK, so that's good. We'll go back to Mr. Tranter then, please. Uh, gender item test for the public interest test. Yes, um, there we are. Just rearrange my screen. Um, thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, so before you members is uh, a public interest test. Um, it's for the report on cyber security. Um, this is quite novel in that, uh, and it is a matter for you as members of the audit committee to decide whether or not to exclude the press and public on the basis that the, uh, the report that you've been provided has been given to you uh, in confidence. And the recommendation of the report author is that you exclude the press and public because of the nature of the contents of, uh, of that report on cybersecurity. So it's my recommendation that you exclude the press and public. Um, but just to re-emphasize, it is a matter for you. Um, but my recommendation to you as a committee is that you now exclude um, the press and public. And uh, if you do so, then if you could wait um, just for a couple of minutes before you proceed to the item uh, so that um, Beck, your uh, clerk, can um, stop the recording uh, of this meeting. So if you've got any uh, questions, Chair, quite happy to take them. But uh, my advice would be to exclude the press and public. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tranter. Mike Adams. I'm happy to move that to recommendation from Mr. Tranter, Chair. Thank you very much. Could I'll I have a second? second? I'll second that. I'll OK. Second that. Could we have the votes, please? As before, Margaret, I have no um, voting forms in front of me, but I agree. 
Thank you very much. Nigel. Somebody log, log that I agree as well, please. Nigel Thank says. you very much. Mike, your hand is still up. Beck, can you tell me if everyone has yes, the chair. opportunity to vote? Yes, chair's carried. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, Julie, could I ask you to stop the recording, please? Yes, chair, I'll just do it now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Tranter, are you going to stay for the rest of the meeting?